you've mentioned a couple times that you feel like your channel more or less solved the Tupac murder. Um, yeah. Were you the first YouTuber to get KPD? I think you were, right? Yeah. Okay. Talk mm -hmm. to me about um, just overall how we're still talking about that case 27 years later, and we'll obviously get into the recent events that have happened with that case. Mm -hmm. But um, what was your approach talking to Keefe D? Because you were the first to get him. Like, was he nervous? Was he apprehensive? What, what was it like on that first interview? Because I know you've done a couple with him. Um, I mean, yeah, I think he was cautious, uh, you know, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as was I. I think I had two securities, you know, the, yeah. that day, you know, both armed. Uh, I think I parked my car kind of down the street and so forth. I mean, listen, I, I don't know who Keefe is. Um, we had a couple of phone conversations, but I don't, I don't know this guy's uh, actual mind frame at the time. Mm -hmm. But I do know his history, and he has a, you know, a violent past. Yeah. So I wasn't taking any chances. Um, but at the end of the day, he wrote a book. So my interview had an outline and a blueprint of the book that he wrote. So mm -hmm. if you watch the interview, whenever he didn't want to answer a question, I'm like, well, but the book said yeah. that yeah. you said X, Y, and Z. So if you don't want to talk about it, you should have written about it, mm -hmm. is the way I look at it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was an interesting interview. I, I felt that uh, it, it got rid of all the conspiracy theories around it. Because if you notice, not only did I do the interview, but it was cross-referencing a lot of other interviews that I did, from Edie of the Outlaws to Napoleon to the First Responder to Greg Kading to all these other people. So it's like some of the things didn't fully line up, but most of the important stuff did. Yeah. So, so that's why I say I kind of solved it because like here is like if you watch this from beginning to end, you'd be hard pressed to say that the government killed Tupac or that. Suge Knight had him assassinated while sitting in the car and getting grazed himself. Um, or that Tupac's still alive and he's out in Cuba somewhere. He, you know, it was a, a very clear chain of events that, you know, these chain of events are happening in neighborhoods across the world right now as we speak. Someone got beat up earlier this afternoon, maybe got something stolen from them, and uh, someone else is going to come back and get revenge over that over that humiliating beatdown. And, you know, so that person is, is likely to have a gun and the, the person, you know, who caused it is going to end up dead by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's happening right now, yeah. somewhere in the world. So it shouldn't be so shocking that this happened just because it happened to be Tupac. It's some, it's some shit that, that happens in certain types of communities, you know. We're really just not even certain type of communities. Really, it was just people in general. People get mad. People have their feelings hurt, and then people want to uh, retaliate. I'm, I'm sure, you know, we've all, you know, had fights that we lost at one point, and I'm sure there's always a the thought of, let me go get a gun and shoot this person. Mm -hmm. You know, some people actually do it, especially if they have a history of doing it, and Orlando had a history of doing it. He was already, he was under investigation for multiple murders at the time, so it's like these pieces, are the puzzle pieces are all fitting together. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. Yeah. What do you think about these conspiracy people think uh, that say, you know, cops killed Tupac or Reggie set up Tupac to be killed so he could take over the label and just crackpot things? Where's where the proof behind it? I mean, I've, I've presented my, you know, my roadmap to it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of who the shooter is in the car, I'm not totally sure about yeah, that. I understand same. that Orlando is being blamed as the shooter, mm -hmm. but... Could be it, Dre. Yeah. Could be Dre. It could be uh, the other guy. Mm -hmm. It could be Keefe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The only person that could, you know, there's only one living person that's in that car, that was in that car right now. So he's not going to say that he did it. Yeah. So Orlando was the obvious one because Orlando's the one that got jumped. Yeah. But, you know, that part I'm not 100% sure on. It was probably Orlando, but mm -hmm. it could have been someone else. Yeah. But... If you say the police did it, okay, show me the proof that the police did it. Yeah. Show me the roadmap leading up to the police doing it. Show me the roadmap of Reggie setting up this hit. I have yet to hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, that's the whole thing with conspiracy theories. Uh, theories is that like, 
oh, it wasn't this, it was really this shadowy group of people. It's like, okay, well, show me the proof of the shadowy group. And it's like, well, no, but I just know that this is bullshit because this one little piece right here doesn't, you know, like the Tory Lane situation. Like, yeah. oh, Tory didn't shoot her. Well, then who shot her? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter, but I know that he's innocent. Yeah. Because Megan's a liar. Okay, so, so who shot her? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Did Kelsey shoot her? Well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, mm-hmm. but did she shoot herself? Did the driver shoot her? Like, like there, there's no, there's no roadmap to these other theories. It's just that a person will not like something about the story and say it's a conspiracy theory, without offering a, a fully vetted alternative. So that, that's how I look at it.